So this is like the visual representation of how people see lifting weights. You're doing push day or chest, it's all like, and when you're doing leg day, it's like this. Time for a bit of the board a-hole here, and today we are talking about legs, your quads, your hamstring, your calves, everything else that's going on inside the things that basically keep you up and allow you to walk around. It's nice to have legs. It's nice to have most body parts, obviously. So it's kind of a difficult one because there are a certain amount of exercises that you should absolutely be doing on legs. But maybe you don't know. Maybe you just started out in the gym. If nothing else, I started this sort of mini series ages ago and we just never did legs or triceps. So we'll absolutely finish it off and I'll put them in their own little playlist. And therefore, if you ever do stumble across this channel and think, oh man, I would like some basic, some moderate and some advanced exercises for training certain muscle parts, you, uh, you've got it. They're there. They're there for you to do it. Now, I know I make that joke in the intro about legs. Of course, working your legs is massively important. There are studies and science out there that shows if you do heavy squats, example, or you really kick your legs his ass, you actually release more testosterone around your whole body. So if you're trying to get, I mean, it doesn't really work like this, but you're trying to get massive biceps, maybe it's going to help training your legs. Again, there's no real, there's no real logic to that whatsoever, but you could probably argue it if you so wish. So I've come up with five exercises I think you absolutely 100% should be doing for your legs, and of course, one that absolutely sucks. These aren't in any order of importance, of course, because they're going to hit different muscle parts of your legs. But number five is the calf raise, the seated calf raise, the standing calf raise. The reason I put it all in one is because it doesn't matter, right? You could, personally speaking, you could read some things that are like, well, if you do a standing calf raise, you're going to, and if you, no, it's about where you put your feet, right? I'm not going to get into it now, but if you put your feet sort of, you know, at the uh, the super vertical position, then you're going to get, you know, you're going to work a different part of the car, calf as if you sort of move the angle of your feet. But ultimately, unless you are massively anal about your calves, which nobody is, because nobody actually gives two hoots about calf muscles, it doesn't matter. But you should be doing them. In terms of rep ranges and how often the frequency, I don't know. Like We've talked about it on this channel again. The calf is essentially the ultimate mystery of life, right? It really, really, really is. You can train them every day. You can train them with every single set you do. You can go heavy. You can go light. You can do high rep, low rep. Your calves kind of just make up their own mind about if they're going to grow or not. Again, I say in the comments all the time, Miller, your calves are rubbish. I'm like, I didn't realize I was working my calves for you, but it's good to know I will now make sure I run by every single little thing I do in the gym by your crazy ass. But just make sure you're doing them, right? Because you don't want to have massive quads and massive hamstrings and tiny calves. You may have that anyway by working them, but at least you know deep down that you have. I do seated calf ranges, uh, ranges, raises, and I do, yeah, I kind of do, I just move my feet around the... Um, uh, the, the foot rest just to try and hit different parts of my calves but the way I do it is always the same it's the same way that you would train anything right some people say oh just rep out the calves rep out the calves but you don't rep out biceps triceps chest back shoulders you take your time and you do time under tension and you sort of aim for that 45 second uh, sort of exercise range when you're doing the set so I say do the same for calves and also when you do get it right oh my gosh it will burn it will burn like a Mother Hubbard, so at least you know you're on the right lines. Uh, don't have any um, <laughs> footage for calves. Basically, because I went to do them, and the machine was in use all the time, so I couldn't film myself, but I do have it for the rest in case you want to see how it's done. And on that note, number four is the leg extension. Absolutely a great way to smash your quads into oblivion. Everybody should be doing the leg extension. You just should. It's... You know, you can control it because you can do it one-legged, you can do it two-legged. But what you want to really make sure is that when you get into the uh, into the rep range where your quads are flexed, just hold it for a couple of seconds. Really, really squeeze your legs at as hard as you can do. And obviously fight it on the way back down, negative reps, time, I'm tension, we've already talked about it. But I sometimes see people just kind of going, whoa, 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 which is fine too. It's better than not doing it. But the way to really get the benefit out of the machine is to hold it at that top. You hold it at the top of that rep. And I tell you, the, the sheer lactic acid, and like I said, the burn, the pump you get in your legs will be crazy. And then you quickly run to the toilet mirror and you just strip off whatever you're wearing. And you can look at your legs, but oh man, look at my quads because you know you never get to do that in any other walk of life but the leg extension is it's just a great way to finish off your quads sometimes it's good to do isolation exercise before you do your big compound movements but i'm talking very very rarely just when you want to change things up so certainly don't do them in this order and you can already tell what's coming later do the big compound movement first but do not ignore leg extensions do not ignore them they are Great for what they, again, they're just such a good isolation exercise. They are, they really, really focus in on your quads and then you'll have big quads and you'll look like an elephant. And on the flip side to that is hamstring curls. Now, there are many different ways that you can do this. 
Uh, here, I'm just using the basic machine that is got in my gym. I prefer the one where you lay down on your front. My gym does have one of those, but it was in use. You could even do a mixture of the two. But maybe if you're not into using machines, which some people aren't, don't get it. I think machines are great. You can also do this just lying down on a bench. You lie down on a bench, you get a dumbbell, push it between your feet, and then you can curl it that way too. I doubt you're going to be able to go very heavy with that because even trying to pick the dumbbell up off the floor kind of kicks other muscles into gear. But either one of these three is at absolutely fine i'll also throw romanian deadlifts in there which probably are the ultimate hamstring builder um and that's essentially where you do a deadlift but you lock in your knees so you're bending from your hips again do not go as heavy with them as you do on uh, on normal deadlifts that would be crazy the reason i probably should do romanian deadlifts more than i do but usually my legs are still kind of a bit not sore is the wrong word, but because I usually do deadlifts the day before I do I do legs. I just don't want to do... Why am I even kidding? I just don't want to do Romanian deadlifts. I, I absolutely don't. I forgot to put it in here as well, but I will say I meant to put it in with leg extensions. Bulgarian split squats are also pretty badass. And I'll make sure I put a picture up here when you can do it. Of course, that's going to hit uh, more than just your quads. But I really, really find I get a good quad pump with that as well. So you should start kind of incorporating all these in, but do not ignore your hamstrings. I think the hamstrings, the quads kind of, if you were going to have like a, a table of leg muscles, the quads are right at the top, then it's the hamstrings, then it's the calves. No, you need to shift everything up into number one space because, you know, the stronger your hamstrings are, the stronger your quads are because they'll work in unison with each other. Of course they will especially when it comes to the exercises we're going to talk about in a minute. Number two are lunges. Now, I hate lunges. I've talked about it a thousand times. They absolutely suck. They just hurt and they're miserable to do. But my word, do they work? When I introduce walking lunges, especially, if you want to do barbell lunges, that's fine too. But me, dumbbell walking lunges are the absolute gold mine. You know, the absolute joy of, not the joy of hell. But they will make your legs grow. They just will. I mean, if you are going, if you are able to grab a couple of dumbbells and walk to the very end of your gym, turn around and walk all the way back, and we call that one set, and do that four times, and then do it twice a week, you're just on your pathway to having much better legs. You really, really, really are. And that's why they suck so much, because they hurt because they're working. Um, I'll also sort of do a slash here. I don't mean I'm going to wee everywhere, but I'll do a slash and say, of course, the leg press is your friend as well. The leg press is... I mean, when you actually think about it, you're just doing a squat, right? It's, it's different because you're not, you know, putting a barbell on your back. But it's the same kind of motion. And once again, you benefit. You can move your feet into different positions. Some people do calf raises on them. You see people repping it out, repping it out, and then they kind of shift their feet down to the bottom edge of it, and, and, they, and they rep it out that way. Make sure your form is good, though. I see a lot of people put loads of weight on because, you know, I do leg press, do 400 kilograms, which is great, which is fine. But there's no point if you're really go not going all the way down and really, you know, going all the way out. Don't hyperextend your legs. It's way too dangerous because actually when you think about leg press, it's the most terrifying thing ever. Like imagine you've got crust under, thing, under that thing, like an accordion. I mean, I think about it all the time. I think about it too much, but make sure you're going heavy, but make sure, yeah, you find that balance between the two. Don't just do stupid crappy reps <laughs> do, <laughs> do proper reps right it's important to do proper reps and then also do lunges really you should take all of these things and throw them into one crazy leg session because uh, you do have to work your legs harder than the rest of your body in my humble opinion because again they are the things that are keeping you up all day they have been designed to take a, a huge workload brunt got to treat them that way number one of course is squats it's not only the most important exercise you can do for legs, but you can argue it's the most important exercise you can do for your entire body. Because, you know, it's not just working your legs. If you are going to go all the way down to the floor and then push all the way back up with a heavy weight across your shoulders, other muscles are going to kick in. Obviously, the main focus is your, is your legs. But make sure you're using a weight where you can go all the way down and all the way back up. I know people now go my form going, Simon, you could go lower. I can't go lower. That's as low as I go, right? And maybe I'm an asshole. Maybe I should die. Maybe I should. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Round of applause for you. But I see benefit and I see progress from these squats. So that's how I'm going to keep doing them. But learn from my mistakes because there was a time when my range of motion sucked. I wouldn't even call it 50% uh, to be honest with you. The angle was absolutely terrible. So what I did, I was down in Bournemouth. How I remember this, I don't know. I stripped all the weight off the bar. I put a uh, 20 kilogram on each side plate. So what's that? 45 pounds, I think, for my American friends. 
and I just made sure I went all the way down and all the way back up. And I made sure I could do that for 15 reps. And I kept doing it. I kept doing it. And I kept slowly putting on weight, slowly putting on weight to the point where now, again, you may not think it's better, but it's better for me where it was. And I actually do see benefit from it. There is no point doing a squat unless you're going all the way down and all the way back up. That is far more important than weight. Also make sure that when you are doing it, you're protecting your lower back because that's the last thing you're not aiming to hurt your lower back. That's not what the exercise is all about. And there's nothing wrong with using knee wraps either. I've got a video coming about this and you can see in that video, I am using knee wraps. If it's going to protect you and it's going to give you confidence and it's going to allow you to lift more safely, then you should do it. It's not a squatting competition. If you're renting a squatting competition, you already know this and you don't need to listen to a bald a-hole ranting about it, but put yourself in the best possible position to do good reps, strong reps and happy reps. That's what it's all about. Now, some people always say to me, Simon, do I have to do squats? The answer is no, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go to the gym. Nobody is forcing you. But if you are happy to do them, they are one of the biggest game changers you could hope to have. They are incredible. They will get, you know, they will gain you so much mass. Not quickly, it still takes time. But once you start getting up into those uh, higher strength ranges, man, do I, do I love a squat? I would marry a squat if I could. And then I'd divorce it because it hurts so much. But it's a couple of thumbs up for the squat. And now we have to talk about the one that absolutely sucks. And you already know what I'm going to say. It's lunges. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them so much. I don't care if I'm running that joke into the ground. When I, the, the, the mental gymnastics I go to to try and convince myself that I don't need to do a lunge. And that goes for walking lunges. It goes for barbell lunges. It goes for any kind of a lunge. I hate the lunge. I hate the lunge. I hate the lunge. I hate the lunge. What's that? HTL. HTL. So much every single day. So it does suck in that sense. But the reason it doubly sucks here, usually I come up with one that actually sucks and you don't need to do. The reason it sucks here is because it works. If it didn't work, we wouldn't have to do it. You have to do it till the day I die. And it would probably be lunges that killed me. There you go. Five leg exercises that absolutely rock and one that absolutely sucks, even though it also rocks. I'm a moron. Like the video, share the video, smash the subscribe button. There's a bell. Hit that ding ding. Then you know when videos are going live. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. If you want to help me support the channel, I'd appreciate it. Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. Come and say hello. Big Cartel, Simon.bigcartel.com for merchandise. There's probably something else I've forgotten about. Click the video on the screen right now and I'll see you soon.